How's it going everybody? Um, this video I'm going to kind of uh, walk through the process of some changes I made to get this thing ready for a few local street diesel classes, sled pulling classes. Uh, I was going to make a video, a longer video, but it's going to be cut up more than I would like and it, it got pretty long uh, because my plans kept changing. So, um, Anyway, there's a few local street diesel classes uh, coming up. <clears throat> and uh, street diesel around here is, you know, usually stock turbo. Um, supposed to be licensed and insured. And some places want you to drive them to the pool. Some places don't allow traction bars. There's, there's uh, different rules depending on if it's an organization or just a little local uh, fair that's putting it on but uh basically uh i kind of started out wanting to fix this truck uh it ever since i put my 4000 governor spring in a long long time ago i don't know probably a couple years after i got it so it's <laughs> 16 17 years ago or i don't know anyway it's had a high RPM stutter for the most part, above 3,000 or 3,200, just depending on how clean the fuel filter was and everything. And way back in the day, I did check the fuel pressure. I changed the overflow valve at 1.2. <clears throat> um, I can't tell you in what order I did all that. And can't remember if, you know, if I ever improved it much or not, but um, it runs pretty good up to close, you know, right around 3,000 and it just starts sputtering and popping. So, anyhow, um, I dug into it and, uh, figured out, well, I, I tapped a port for my fuel pressure gauge on the injection pump and, uh, that way I could get a pressure reading and uh so my fuel pressure at idle before i changed anything was uh, about 12 pounds 10 or 12 pounds and then um under load it was down closer to five or zero <laughs> if you're you know getting on it and uh my current fuel system at the start of this video was half inch draw straw in the tank, half inch line down to a Carter lift pump, a little electric pump. Then it goes into the factory 5 16 line up to the factory mechanical lift pump, which is supposed to step the pressure up for the injection pump. And uh, it's kind of a misfit fuel system. I put that Carter pump on a long time ago just to try to help with the high RPM stuff. And it did help but it just never was as good as I wanted it to be. So anyhow, I got I checked my fuel pressure and pretty well determined it was low. So uh, put some vice grips on the return line, on the fuel return line off the injection pump and checked pressure again and I had 60 pounds at idle. So I knew my pump was capable of making a lot more pressure than what the overflow valve was holding. So I bought a Torque Tech adjustable overflow valve um they're kind of uh, they're a few dollars but they come pretty highly recommended um and i think they're supposed to be set between 30 and 32 psi at idle that's what they claim anyhow uh i went ahead and got that installed and uh it helped a lot i had uh, i want to say right around 20 20 or so pounds at idle which is not the 32 that they claim, but it's, you know, it's enough. It's 20 or 22, something like that. And, uh, but I found that revving it up, the pressure actually would rise to 40 or just a touch over. And under load, it actually would hold pretty good up around 30 uh, and maybe close to 40 also, depending on how much load and RPM. And uh, so, <clears throat> I went and drove the thing, and uh, I mean, it wrapped right up to 3,500 RPM. Just no trouble at all, smooth. 
and I mean that's the best it's done in a you know pretty good while <laughs> that's the best it's ever revved honestly um, I also pulled the banjo bolts out of the top of the factory fuel filter housing and uh, I drilled them a little bit bigger because it, it, they've got pretty small holes in them so before I went and drove it I decided that um, I was going to go ahead and run half inch fuel line the rest of the way to the uh, factory lift pump so I actually just bypassed my electric pump and uh, so now I've got half inch line from my draw straw all the way to the lift pump inlet I also bypassed the factory lift pump uh, the little fuel heater on the lift pump or beside the lift pump because it's somewhat of a restriction or it can be so with that done, I went out and test drove, and this thing revs better than it ever has. Uh, I mean, I, I wrapped it up to about 3,500 in gear and shifted it, and you know, it was just pulling strong the whole way. I really don't need to rev it much higher than that under load. I still have factory valve springs in this truck and uh but it run so much better and with it running that good without an electric pump uh, i decided to just leave that out of the loop um i actually had a air dog it's only 15 psi air dog pump i was going to put on there that would have been a lot better than the carter but i don't really think i need it for where i'm at right now so i'm just gonna just gonna leave it alone um uh, so I got my fuel system straightened out and then uh, I went ahead and put my traction bars on. The ends on them were really, <laughs> well, some of the threads were like, well, on the, the rear end of both of them. One of them, the threads were wiped clean off of when I got it out. And the other one um, was stuck really bad. They were all stuck, but the other one was stuck real bad. And I was able to get the front end of each bar um, broke free because uh, they were all stuck. And they've got enough threads that I was able to adjust them. So that's fine. It lets me adjust them fit and then pin them. So uh, I went ahead. I actually welded the rears of them so they're not adjustable anymore. And they, that way they won't. The one without the threads won't slip or anything. But... Uh, so I got my bars put back on because the the class that the first class I uh, pulled in allows it. So I might as well use them if I can. Um, but I had to heat the ends red hot to get them things broke loose. So then I uh, worked on my turbo wastegate a little bit. Um, it's been kind of sticking on me and not spooling like it should. And uh, that didn't take too much. I just had to work a little WD-40 into it and worked it manually a few times and checked it with air. And everything was good there. Um, so the last thing I did was kind of a <laughs> homebrew timing job. This truck was supposed to have been at 16 degrees. Uh, I had shy diesel. It set it at the uh, shot extravaganza probably in like 2007 or eight. And I had them set it at 16 degrees. And uh, so I didn't have the tools yet to do it. Uh, or I didn't have access to them, I'll say. I never have owned the tools. But uh, anyway, um, so I had them set it at 16 degrees. And uh, so it's been that way for, you know, ever since then. And I decided that I'd like to bump it up a little more. It is harder on the head gasket, but I've got head gasket and studs for this truck and it, it kind of needs them anyway. So, um, uh, basically I did some math and figured out how far the, the damper on the crankshaft needed to rotate, um, to add four degrees of timing, which would put it at 20 and uh so i just cut me a piece of tape that width 
and my cousin gave me the idea they he's got a diesel shop and uh, he gave me the idea that's how they do it sometimes uh, depending on what they're doing and they've got an actual timing light they can verify with but uh, anyhow I cut me a piece of tape that would be equal to four degrees and made me a pointer and I set it on that and popped the pump gear off and rotated my crank back and then tightened the pump gear back up and that advanced it four degrees um, hopefully <laughs> but it sounds like it and runs you know runs like it definitely made a difference and this thing revs way cleaner it doesn't pop and sputter I guess it's got more time to burn the fuel and it definitely runs smoother so uh, you know I went out and test drove it after doing all that and revved it up some and uh, really really made a big difference and and it I mean it it revs really good now compared to what it was <laughs> It revs funny far as I need to take it. <laughs> so at least until I, you know, maybe at some point add some more fuel and get a big turbo or something, or at least do some other modifications, but uh, definitely need valve springs. But uh, anyhow, so it, I made some pretty big improvements. Just, you know, spent kind of one week worth of evenings working on it. And uh, so I will, I did, pull it once already there's a couple more coming up i'd like to make but this first pull um ended up fifth out of 12 trucks and the first two i can't say for sure if they met the rules or not but for certain they're they're pretty strict pulling trucks i don't imagine they pull a trailer with them or anything um i mean this truck here i pull a trailer with it drive it wherever i want to drive it uh you know I, it still gets worked it's got 290,000 the engine's never been out of it has never been off it's got a stock uh, third gen turbocharger on it so it meets street class rules and it is a street truck 100% um, you know I do play with it and it's not stock but uh, anyhow uh, the other trucks that I felt like were street trucks that were ahead of me were there was only about five and a half feet between me and third place and uh, third place was a 6.7 Cummins with a built automatic and a pretty max effort tune, I think. Stock turbo and some big tires on it. And then second, or I mean uh, fourth place behind the 6.7 Cummins was a, I think a LBZ Duramax with a, a pretty hot tune. It was smoking, both those trucks were smoking really heavy down the track. Uh, it was a dually and uh, he uh, uh, he was three or four feet in front of me. So uh, honestly, I thought the truck did really well. I mean, this thing's an old dinosaur, you know. <laughs> it's a 94 model, it's almost 30 years old now. It's just hard to beat a 12 valve for reliability, but you know, people, people talk common rails like these old 12 valves can't compete, but I mean, they're still, they're still hanging in there, you know. They've got the capability to uh, run with about anything, I think. Drivability might not be as good in some situations, but um, I mean, they're, they're still still pretty tough old birds. But uh, I was pretty pretty happy with the old truck. I was I only weighed 7,400 pounds and you could weigh 85, so I was really light. But I had pretty good speed. Uh, I think I could benefit from bigger tires but uh, anyhow, I was happy with how the truck ran. They actually paid back to fifth place. That's the first payout I've ever got. <laughs> Slid pulling. So uh, I guess I can't complain about that. But they decided to pay back five places because I think after the driver's meeting, they decided that probably half the class didn't meet the rules in some way or another. And uh, I kind of worked to make sure my truck met the rules so, you know, I wish everybody else had kind of done the same and it would have been 100% fair. But uh, it is what it is. That's just kind of how pulling is, I think. It's, you know, there's always somebody trying to squeak in with the hottest truck they can run, which I guess I understand. <laughs> but uh, I'm not complaining. It, it was fun. 
So I'll uh, run that video here at the end, uh, and hopefully there'll be a couple more pulls that I'll get to make. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll keep you updated if I make any other changes. Now we'll see what happens. Seems like a great group of drivers we met with, and we're ready to go. So Eric East, there we go, look at that. Turn those ears. Turn them on. 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 Turn them